All right, here we go. We're going to make uh, homemade pierogies. All right, let's do this. Inside here I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. All right. <clears throat> to that, we're going to add one quarter cup of sour cream. A quarter of a cup. Probably that much. All right. And we're going to add one egg. And two thirds of a cup of water. Okay, mix it all up. This is the dough for the pierogies. I've already got the um, the mashed potato mix made, the filling. The filling's already made. This is just the dough. If you need to, add a little more water. I don't think we do though. Let me just get this mixed and we'll figure it out here in a minute. No, nope, I don't think so. We maybe add a little bit as we're as we're kneading it. All right. Now they say to knead it 51 times. I remember my granny used to say 51 and you're done. She tried to uh, rhyme everything. <laughs> All right. So put it on a greased flour. Uh, uh, you know, a board. All right, that was one. Here's two, three. There's four, five. It doesn't matter which way you go. Here's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like I say, it doesn't matter which way you do this. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I don't know, 22, 23, I don't know, like words about 50 points. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, all right. Okay, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, for about 10 minutes. It's not going to rise or anything. There's no, uh, uh, you know, there's no yeast. It's just going to sit there about 10 minutes. All right. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Here's our dough. Feels good. It's relaxed. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to roll it out. Okay, now look, here's what I did. To make this easy, after you make the mashed potatoes, you put them in the refrigerator. All right, then once they're cold, then you make your little balls that are going to be the filling for the pierogies. If you want to use meat or sauerkraut or anything like that, just make sure that it's cold before you put it into the dough. Alright, these are made up ahead so it's going to be one, two, three. The ones here with the little green spots in it, that's fresh basil that I cut up and, and put in there. I, I love fresh basil in them. Uh, now, listen, a lot of this recipe here is only mashed potatoes, salt, pepper, and cream cheese. That's it. There's no butter and no milk. Don't put that in because it'll get too thin. Now, a lot of recipes call for diced onions. You, you chop them up real small and you saute them and then add them into the potatoes. But I don't like doing that personally. I like the, the, uh, the onions sauteed at the end. You know, you saute the onions in a pan 
and serve them with the sautéed onions and the sour cream. That's just my personal way of doing it. You know, you can do it either way. It doesn't matter. I, you know, I don't really care. If you want to uh, to put the onions in with the potatoes, that's fine. You do it. Whatever you know, whatever floats your boat. All right, we want to get these about. I'm gonna say about a little bit thinner than an eighth of an inch. You can see the dough has some elastic to it, which is good. That's what you want, you know. All right, there we go. It's a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. Okay. All right, now we're going to cut them. Look, I didn't have a cutter, so I used this uh, <laughs> ricotta cheese thing. I cut it off, and we're using that. Now, this is about the size that we want. It's about three inches. Um, again, you could make them any size you want. It's totally up to you whatever you do. It doesn't matter. You're going to stretch these things anyway once we pick them up and start rolling them. So, you know, the cutter, you know, the cutter is not important. You don't need no stinking cutter. All right, now, what I like to do is I like to brush half of it with water. Uh, it's all that's going to do is give you a little bit of glue you know that's all it's going to do but I like to have the glue on there so there's no chance of them opening okay here we go we've got our uh, our filling our our um, wrapper all right and just as you go you just smash the thing if you have to you know do whatever you have to do to get the thing sealed up in there there you go. That's our first one. Now, now listen, you have to set this on a dry towel. So get your board ready with a dry towel. Uh, you know, if, if you have enough room on your counter, you could flower the counter and set them on the counter. But a dry towel is a lot easier. All right, there we go. Also, in the meantime, I have a large saute pan um, right now with water in it and it's on the stove and it's heating up okay now look you don't want a pan with a small mouth you want a pan like a big saute pan you want a pan with a large mouth so that when you put these in there they're not gonna all stick together you know what I mean I'll show you when I when I uh, when we get up to throw them into the water. Okay, this is what I mean about a pan with a big mouth. You know what I mean? A pan that's that's very open. All right, we're going to drop them in. See this way we can do we can do a whole bunch of them and save a lot of time, you know. Otherwise, if you have a pan that has a smaller diameter, well then you're just going to have to do, you know, more than one batch. All right, we're going to cook these for about 3 minutes. The dough has to cook. So Imagine that this is pasta dough. You know, that's one way to look at it. All 
Make sure they're not stuck. Be very careful with them. Uh, like I said, about three minutes. So, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Check out this timer. It's a little bitty pot. All right, and we'll just crank it all the way up and then bring it back down to three minutes. Two and a half minutes now. There we go. All right. All right, timer went off. Now we're going to put them into a greased pie tin. Make sure there's some oil in this pie tin because they will still stick to each other. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to freeze them individually. In other words, I'll freeze them in this pie pan and then once they're frozen, then you won't have to worry about them sticking to each other. And we'll put them into a freezer bag and in the freezer they go. And that's the end of that. All right, we'll get ready for our other batch. Okay, there you go. That's the last. That's the second batch. Here is the info you need. The filling is one and a half pounds of potato. Three ounces of cream cheese. Salt and pepper to taste. All right now, if you want to put diced sautéed onions in, that's up to you. That's optional. All right, the skins are two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour. A quarter cup of sour cream. Two thirds cup of water and one egg. Mix it up and knead it 51 times. 51 and you're done. There you go. Uh, fill them up. Put them in a pan like this, boil them, uh, and then we're going to saute some and, uh, and I'm going to munch out. Hold on. All right, here we go. This is the final product. We've got our pierogies here, a little bit of butter in the pan. Three of them. One of them stuck. Damn it. And here's our onion. You know, normally I use regular white onion for this, but uh, I've had this onion in there for a while. I want to get rid of it. There we go. Oh man, it's already smelling. Fucking gourmet. Holy crap. Woo -hoo -hoo. I guarantee. Alright. This is good stuff. It really doesn't get better than this. It really doesn't. I'm trying to tell you. Now you know what? If you like pot stickers, you could uh, you could make a skin uh, out of rice flour, and you could make make pot stickers. You know, you can put anything you want in there as your filler, as your filling. Um, uh, see, that's what I'm saying about cooking. Once you know how to basic, how to do the basic things, you can do anything. You know, um, you know, even if you never made pierogies, but you know how to sauté and you know how to make a dough. Well, that's that's all it takes. Then all you do is you apply the pierogi recipe to what you know already and there you go oh man this too whoo I'm telling you all right I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the uh, onion the pierogies are fine. They don't need anything. 
the the um, the failure hernia is you know this season. The season is this season, but you don't need to tense up a little bit. And I'm looking to the same starting. Look out! Ooh, very good stuff. Like I said, some people chop up the onion and sauté and they put it inside with the uh, with the potato. You no, know, I just personally I like onion outside. That's just the way I like. You know, you do it a lot. You make a lot of meat out of shrimp. You know, basically the skin is basically a pasta dough. The only difference between this skin and pasta is that this has water. Pasta is nothing more than a flour and egg. Uh, so the difference is that this has a little bit water. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Holy moly. Look out, baby. Here it comes. There it is. All right. There it is right there. Got your pierogies, onion, and sour cream. And I gotta tell you, it doesn't get any better than this.